Hello and welcome to a new video. Today we are putting a Tunisian crochet border on a project that curls. So if you have a blanket or anything else that you've made and you have this curl and it's not solved by blocking the project, then you can add this kind of an edging and make the project lay flat without blocking. I will demonstrate on this unblocked square, which you've seen in the previous video where we discussed different ways of making Tunisian crochet stay flat. You will need some of the yarn that you used for the main body of the project, the same weight and the same hook that you used to make what will be the central part of the project. You can make this edging as wide as you want to. I recommend 6 stitches or 10 stitches for a blanket that, that will be wide enough. For something narrower like a scarf you can do even 3 stitches. Stitches. As you can see it's very very effective at removing all the curl in a Tunisian crochet project. I have some of the same yarn here. This is a size 4 yarn with 60 meters per 50 grams and the hook that I used to create this swatch. You will need the same hook that you use for your project and some yarn. You can, it can be the same color or a contrast color. You can start on any corner but I will start on the lower right corner of the piece as I worked it. So I worked it like this and I will start on this corner. If you start on a different corner you just have to be aware that this edge needs to be worked a bit differently than the other edges because if you only work into these two loops then you will have some holes here so you have to pay attention to the back side of the work as well. We begin with a slip knot on the hook. To make the slip knot we make a loop and then pull the main yarn through the loop, put it on the hook and then pull to close it up. We will be working on the right side, okay? And to begin we will pick out the corner stitch here and put the hook through it but also picking up the extra loop that is on the back here. So like this there will not be a hole. We lock the first loop in by doing a slip stitch and then we begin the actual work. In my case I will make three stitches. You can do as many as you like. The pattern will be the same. So we make three chains without pulling back on the yarn. Okay so you need loose tension and then we pick up three loops. One in each of the back bumps of the chain. We are at the end of the first row and we will put another loop in the same starting chain that we did when we began the work and we pick up a loop. Now we yarn over, pull through two, all the way to the beginning of the row. This is the foundation row and this is the only one that will have three Tunisian simple stitches or in your case as many as you have in your border. Next we will pick up one purl stitch. So one purl stitch, one simple stitch and one purl stitch. To do the purl stitch you bring the yarn to the front, you insert the hook and then you yarn over and pull up a loop. Now we will put the next loop in the next space on the edge of this piece and again we go behind these two loops and then on the back we pick up this extra loop as well. Yarn over pull up loop and now we yarn over pull the two to the beginning of the row. Now we have a simple stitch, then a purl stitch, and a simple stitch. And we put another loop in the next space in the main piece and make sure we pick up the extra loop on the back here. Yarn over pull through two to the beginning of the row. And now we repeat this sequence. We have purl stitch, simple stitch, purl stitch. We have the next space, pick up the loop on the back, yarn over pull through two. We keep on working this repetition of rows that start with a purl stitch and then the rows that start with a simple stitch all the way to the corner. So I will do this and then I will show you two ways to turn the corner. When you reach the last stitch on the main body of the object that you are adding the border to, you want to continue making as many rows as you will have in the edging. So if you have six stitches then you will make six rows. If you have ten you will make ten rows. Since I have three I will make three. And this is just like regular Tunisian crochet. We have the three stitches or in your case six or eight and then we need the last stitch we will put it in the same space as the previous row and then instead of yarning over and pulling through two we chain one like in regular Tunisian crochet and then we yarn over and pull through two. So we are essentially increasing this border a few more rows. 
when you reach the stitch as always go behind the two vertical bars pick up a loop chain one yarn over pull through two to the beginning of the row and this is my last row on this side I reach the last stitch put the hook behind the two vertical bars chain one and then yarn over pull through two to the end of the row what is left to do here is to cast off in pattern so that we reach this corner so we can continue along the next side we do the same stitches instead of leaving them on the hook we do the slip stitch to make the next row we will pick up loops in these three stitches from the previous section we can start with the simple stitches just until you get used to the idea or you can just start in pattern I will do the simple stitches because it's easier to pick up loops directly in here and it will be the same as on this side it will not influence the curliness of the edging so now we have a row we will pick up one loop in the next stitch on the edge and in this case we don't have an extra loop this is just like regular crochet so we pick this up and then we yarn over and pull through two and then we continue in pattern and pick up the next loop in the next stitch on the project that we are edging and so on until the corner now I've reached the end of my second side and I want to show you how to make another type of turning the corner but for the sake of presentation right now I will show you with simple stitches because it's easier to see where you have to put the hook the first row will be three stitches we pick up three stitches or in your case as many stitches as you need to have a full row without the last stitch then we yarn over pull through two to the beginning of the row and now we have one less stitch to work because this was a decrease so we pick up two loops in my case or n minus one in your case then yarn over pull through two twice and now we have one last loop left pick up a loop yarn over pull through two to finish the row I have created a triangle here and I will create the other half of the square we begin by chaining one and picking up one loop in the back bump of this chain to finish the row we have to search for the row with one stitch so this is the row with one stitch and we will put the hook through the diagonal stitch here to pick up one loop to finish the row this will be the last stitch then yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two to finish the row now we pick up one loop from the previous row and we have to make one stitch so in this horizontal bar here we put the hook through and pick up a loop now we have two stitches and we need to finish the row that has two simple stitches which is here so we find a diagonal loop here put the hook through pick up a loop then yarn over pull through two to the end of the row and i have one more row to do pick up two loops pick up one loop in the horizontal bar here and now because we don't have a diagonal here we will work directly into the corner stitch then yarn over pull through two to the beginning of the row and this is how we turn a corner with simple stitches now you can continue in pattern with honeycomb stitch purl simple purl and pick up one loop in the next stitch again we don't have a, an extra stitch here and there will not be any gaps just continue like this across the row and then when you reach the corner just pick the turning method that you like best i will continue working on the square and i will show you how to finish off when i reach the end here since we already have an edge here we will not need to create another one with the last stitch so we pick up the loops that are on the row and now instead of creating one last stitch in the corner here we will pick up a loop in the foundation chain from the first row as if it were the side of the project then yarn over pull through two to the beginning and then another row and pick up the next stitch yarn over pull through two to the beginning and in my case it's the last row so we pick up the three loops and then put the hook through the last stitch pick up a loop 
yarn over pull through two and now the last thing to do is cast off this row in pattern pearl stitch slip stitch then a simple stitch and slip stitch and another pearl stitch and then here you can do a slip stitch into the first stitch there and that's it then you cut off the yarn and weave it in if you were to do this kind of corner then you will have to bind off on the last row here in the corner and then sew up the seam because there's no way to get two rows together like that which is why i recommend using this easier method which is also quite invisible so this is the finished piece with all the edges bound with the honeycomb stitch and as you can see it's perfectly flat even without using steam to block it so i hope you enjoyed this video please let me know which one of the two methods you like most for turning the corner and if this has helped you get flat projects in tunisian crochet and if you want to know when i publish more videos please subscribe and you can also subscribe to my emails thank you so much for watching and now we'll see you next time bye